Now, getting into what's known as recalcitrance or neshuz. Recalcitrance is obstinate disobedience. That in Arabic comes from a root word, neshazat, which means to rise up. And a man can be nashes in relation to his wife, and a wife can be nashes in relation to his, her husband. So it goes both ways. The Quran mentions both types of neshuz. Uh, the neshuz from the husband to the wife and, the, and vice versa. So according to Tajir Arus, Nashes means a woman who is uh, disobedient to her husband and exalting herself against him and hating him and deserting him. So it's a strong thing. It's not a little thing. And uh, according to Imam Feruz Abadi, it can apply to both men and women. He says it means, quote, her husband treated her injuriously and was unkind to her or estranged himself from her. So those are, those are, that's what nashuz means. There's some type of harm happening uh, in the relationship. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, says, Ar-rijar qawamun ala nisa, that men are maintainers of women, bima faddalallahu ba'dahum ala ba'd, due to some things uh, that Allah has preferred some over others, and because they have the obligation of supporting them with their wealth. The, the righteous women, they are virtuous women, and they're qanitats, which means obedient to Allah. So, they obey their husbands in things that Allah has commanded them to obey their husbands in. They don't have to obey their husbands in anything that Allah has not commanded to obey their husbands in. In the same way that a, a man must be obedient to his responsibilities as well, to the woman. So if a man, he has to be kind to the woman, he has to treat her well, he has to clothe her, he has to, and if he's not, it's disobedience to Allah. So this is about disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not about positions of power and subordination and people should understand that because this is really misunderstood and misinterpreted and then Allah says and those who have gone into a state even though it says that you have fear of their nushus it means that they've gone into this state of recalcitrance that in that case admonish them Tell, talk to them. So this is the first stage of speaking to them about this, that this is a haq, it's, it's a right. It's not about things that there's no right, because a woman cannot be nashes in things that the husband has no right over. This is really important. That's why women have to know their rights and responsibilities. Men need to know their rights and responsibilities. And then you can understand when there's disobedience. So, وَهْدُرُهُنَّ فِي الْمَضَاجِعِ and then if that does not have an effect, then don't sleep with them. That's the next stage. And then if that does not have an effect, then discipline them. And barb in Arabic generally means to strike. And that's why if it says beating is wrong, that is a wrong translation. It does not say beat your women. It just doesn't say that. But having said that, I think the best commentator on this that I've seen. I want to read this because I think it's really important, especially now because there's so much about this here. Qadhi Abu Bakr ibn al-Arabi commenting on these verses says, it is confirmed that the Prophet ﷺ said, O humanity, know that your women have responsibilities towards you and you have responsibilities towards them. Your rights are that they not associate with people you dislike and they do not display any clearly outrageous behavior. Fahisha. Indeed, should they do that, then Allah has permitted you to abandon their beds and to strike them lightly, causing no visible signs. I mean, that's in the hadith. Should they desist, then you must support them and clothe them with kindness. In this, this is Qadi al Bakr. In this is a clear proof that maintenance is not a right of a recalcitrant woman. So if a woman's in the shoes, she's not, you know, you don't have to maintain her materially. Moreover, the meaning of clearly outrageous behavior is verbal abuse and not fornication in this instant. So it's somebody who's being verbally abusive. Which goes both ways. I mean, verbal abuse is unacceptable. I mean, look at the Quran. It says to say to Pharaoh, speak gently to Pharaoh. I mean, what does that mean about your wife or your husband? Right? If that's what Allah says about Pharaoh who claimed to be God. I mean, what does it say about the person you live with? 
and are supposed to be caring about and loving. And that's one of the major reasons for marital problems is verbal abuse. And that's a mental cruelty, they call it, in, in American culture. It's grounds for divorce because people really can be harmed by it. And it's haram. It is haram to do that. Now, in this, the Prophet, peace be upon him, also explains striking, mentioned in the Quran, as that which leaves no visible effects and no traces upon her body. Right? However, now listen to this very clearly. However, Ata said he should never hit her, even if he tells her to do or not do something and she disobeys. Rather, it means he should display anger toward her. Now, Ata is a student of Ibn Abbas. Now, listen what Qabli Abu Bakr ibn Arabi says. This is from the deep understanding of Ata because of his penetrating comprehension of the sacred law and its purposes in terms of knowing where the locations of juristic reasoning lie. He realized that the imperative case here is used to mean permissibility and not an injunction. He also determined it is detested, makru. From another source, which is the hadith of Abdullah bin Sam'a, in which the Prophet ﷺ said, I detest that a man should strike his wife when he becomes angry. Maybe he would want to sleep with her later in the day. So in other words, it's not conducive to a good relationship, <laughs> to intimacy and things like that. So, akrahu, an yadrib rajal amatuhu. So when the Prophet said akrahu, it was saying that it's makru, uh, to even do that without leaving a trace. So it's not a prophetic sunnah, and there's nothing encouraged about it. But it certainly does not mean domestic violence. But that is haram by consensus. It is haram to harm a person physically by consensus unless you have a had punishment, right? Or a ta'zir of a qadi. Other than that, nobody has the right to, to physically abuse another human being, right? With a child, you can discipline them lightly also. Also, Imam Malik radiallahu related a hadith in which the prof, somebody asked the Prophet permission to strike a disobedient wife, and he replied, strike, but the best of you would never strike a woman. So the Prophet said that because the Quran says it. And I want you to remember this, that the, the verse came down when the Prophet was taking a woman to go beat her husband because the husband had, had hit her, and he wanted to get qisas. Now, the verse was revealed on the way to this man's house. And, and part of the reason that that came to the Prophet is because the Prophet, in his absolute fairness of wanting things to be fair and equal, he was going to allow a woman to go beat her husband. Now, if you understand the Arabs, you would understand what that would mean uh, to them at that time in particular, but even now, because the Arabs... There's just a lot of pride in Arabic nature. I mean, most people have pride, but some people have, it can be overweening pride. And this is one of the diseases of the Arab uh, people before Islam, was tafakhur and this kibr. And he's saying, Islam came to really remove this from their hearts. So had that happened, they, uh, there would have been people that probably leave Islam because I mean, they were being told not to beat their animals. If it's haram to beat an animal, I mean, how can you beat a human being? Right. Now, the beautiful thing that Sh Ibn Ashur said, that the verses actually came to remove domestic violence. Because what he said is that he said that people abuse in fits of anger. That's when people are violent, when they get angry. And he said that this verse is telling people, don't do that, to stop and admonish. And he said if they do that, they won't ever get to the anger because it's disciplining their own souls in dealing with that. So this is a problematic verse. It will continue to be problematic. It's as simple as that. I mean, it is a problematic verse in the Quran. It was for the commentators then, and particularly in the, in, you know, the present environment. But it, it's absolutely necessary that everybody understands that it is prohibited to beat uh, anybody in your household. It's just simply, it's haram. It's as simple as that. And it should not be seen in any other way. This type of disciplining, I mean, s some people can say, you see it in these old 1930s films where somebody's going on and on, they're screaming and something like that, and then, you know, the woman will hit him or she'll hit her like a strike, and then they kind of calm down. And in some ways, it's like that. It's like, you know, somebody can get into a hysterical state, and if you just kind of hit them like that, you know, snap to it, it kind of brings them back into their bodies. And 
I think a lot of it is, is probably related to that. You know, it would be just something like just to kind of come to it, you know, snap to it. If somebody's in a hysterical type of state, it wouldn't be more than that. So, and I think that goes both ways. But generally that's, I hope everybody understands that because it's, it's really important. Now I want to say that there's an interesting fourth verbal form of the same root, nesheza, which is ancheza, which means to restore life. Right? So sometimes in these conflicts that happen in marriages, a renewed type of life can actually come out of it. Because these are tribulations that cause people to actually grow. So people can grow from conflict. I mean, conflict is one of the sources that we learn from, that we benefit from. So I think nushus can become in shaz. It, it can cause people, sometimes a husband needs to reassess how he's treating his wife. Because oftentimes a woman will behave that way for other reasons. I mean, these, these can be strategies because they're not getting enough attention, because the husband is not spending time with them. There's a lot of things that can be happening. And so men need to look at that. And the same with a husband towards the wife. Sometimes we need to interpret what people are saying, because it, not everybody is at the level where they can just come out and say what's in their heart. They will sometimes give you messages other ways of doing that. So there's going to be conflict in life. You know, it's not always the best way to interpret these things negatively. But I would say a comprehensive definition of nushus is an arrogant disobedience of a woman towards her husband or a husband towards his wife, which involves a gross neglect of rights in the marriage that were previously mentioned. That, I mean, that's nushus. There's a gross neglect of rights. It's not one time, it's not two times. I mean, we're dealing with People are not fulfilling their rights, and you came into the marriage with a contract based on Allah and His Messenger. And that's how you've married. It's a contract with Allah and His Messenger that you're going to fulfill. The